Jones. But what do you think of when I say that to you? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Those millions of dollars? What you see them do on the field, on the court, the wins, the playoffs, the games, maybe even the money, the cars, the houses. But what actually happens off the court when that applause dries down? Well, for a lot of those players, you know what they end up doing? They end up clipping coupons, quite frankly. Listen to this, folks. Nearly 60% of all NBA players go broke within five years from getting out of the league. It's 78% within two years for the guys in the NFL. Now, my guest tonight, you're going to want to hear from. He made more than $110 million in his NBA career, but he wound up filing for bankruptcy recently. This was in 2010. Yeah, brother, I see that facial expression you just made. Now, he's going to reveal what happened and why and how others can learn from his mistakes. We're very happy to have him here Willing to share his story, Antoine Walker is here with us tonight. All right, we start with a, a sports story. This is not Sports Center, no doubt. But did you see the Dallas Cowboys over the weekend beat the Cincinnati Bengals? This was one of the best games of the weekend. This was a a one point win. This was a last second forty yard field goal. Now, any other Sunday, this would have been a, a thrilling win, or even a season highlight for the Cowboys, but it turned out to be just a morale boost for a team that was struggling with the death of reserve linebacker Jerry Brown. Brown died in a car accident early Saturday morning. He was in a car driven by his best friend, his roommate, and Cowboys nose tackle Josh Brent, who was allegedly driving drunk. Now, he is now charged with intoxication manslaughter. Now, this is a story that now comes just a week after police said that 25-year-old Kansas City Chiefs linebacker Javon Belcher murdered the mother of his daughter shortly before killing himself in the Chiefs parking lot in front of the coaching staff, some members of that coaching staff. Now, these stories are a reminder for all, a reminder for all of us. Now, many of these athletes appear to be superhuman gladiators. They're really just mortals. They are flawed. They're fragile. They're troubled even irresponsible like many of us. It can affect everything from family to finance. In fact, many players found their millions didn't last long at all. It didn't last a decade, let alone a lifetime. It starts out great. Draft day. The commissioner greets you at the podium. Soon you'll be out there proving your worth. But before that happens, you better D up. There's a lot out there you have to look out for. The first challenge, cash. Sure, you just signed a multi-million dollar contract, but frivolous spending could get you. What I'm saying is maybe you should stay away from Vegas. Maybe you don't need to buy a tiger. Next up, just because you know them, you don't own them. Try to avoid buying everyone you've ever met a house. Sure, take care of your mom, but your fifth cousin twice removed does not need an Escalade. Next, women. And this is a tough one, fellas. There are plenty of wonderful women out there worth spending your life with. But you might want to watch out for any future cast members of basketball bots. Also, beware of your boys. You know those trusted advisors, the people who are supposed to be handling your money? Agents, managers, lawyers, even family friends from way back when who may not have your back. And the one that's most difficult to rebound against. Bad investments. So many investments go belly up. And remember, you're a baller, not a rapper. Add up injuries, trade rooms, and the press, and you may find that no matter how well you play in life, sometimes it's hard to get a win. One, number one overall. He made over $200 million in his career. Now, what did he do with that money? Well, by some reports, he bought a diamond-encrusted pendant with his number on it. Well, who wouldn't? I want one of those right now that says don't sleep on it. He also had his uh, hairstylist travel everywhere with him. That was expensive. He's also had some issues with lawsuits, at least $265,000 spent on that. He's also been banned from casinos in Atlantic City and Detroit. Some gambling issues there. Also, the courts have frozen his assets at times because he had a jewelry bill 
of $860,000. Exactly. How about the case of Vince Young? $58 million contract coming off of that national championship at Texas. He signed that one with Tennessee Titans. $26 million of that money was guaranteed. Now, how could he lose it all? Well, he claims it was financial mismanagement. He's suing his financial planner right now. He's suing his agent, who's also a childhood friend, because he says they took out a, about a $2 million loan without his knowledge. He yeah. also allegedly was wasteful at times. Now, I love some Cheesecake Factory, but I have no clue how you spend $5,000 a week at the Cheesecake Factory, which he allegedly did. He's out of the league right now. And then there's the infamous case of Mike Tyson. The young, oh, y'all know already. He's the youngest heavyweight champion ever. Earned over $400 million in his boxing career. You know he ran into all kinds of issues, including legal issues, criminal issues. Went to prison for three years. Admitted to cocaine addiction. He was banned from the sport for a bit after he had lunch on Evander Holyfield's ear. Now, when he declared bankruptcy in 2003, he was $23 million in debt. And then there is the case of Antoine Walker. You remember him? Remember him well. He was the sixth overall pick of the Boston Celtics. Now, he signed a contract, $71 million. That was in 1999. Another six-year, $53 million contract in 2005. This brother is a three-time NBA All-Star. Earned over $110 million during 13 seasons in the game. He is here with me now. Brother, good to see you. Good to have you here, man. Um, That's right. Now, we talk about that $110 million. That's what you earned on the court. You had some endorsement deals. What else did you make in addition to that $110 million? How much more money? Um, I didn't have huge endorsement deals. Yeah. I was lucky enough to um, be endorsed by Adidas. Yeah. Um, and they paid me over $10, $10 million throughout my career, which was which was great, you know, to get a shoe contract like that. Everything else was local deals. Um, I, didn't, I wasn't the, the national you know, okay. poster boy for the league, so I wasn't in a lot of national campaigns. But we're clearly talking about you and your playing career made in essence of 120 130 million dollars mm -hmm. as we sit here right now what do you have left i'm going through bankruptcy right now i've been going through it in the last two and a half years um so we won't know oh, that's, okay. the, that's good, a good mom. thing about filing for bankruptcy it gives you an opportunity to relieve some of that debt and also to see where you're going to be at uh, help me understand you don't know what you have what, 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 is well, it, does that mean you are in debt to folks and you don't know what they're going to take? So you don't know what you have. Well, it's not my. It's not. It's not. Once you file bankruptcy, it's not up to me. Uh -huh. um, it turns over to the trustees, and they determine the breakout so of, of your creditors and, and how much money the that they, they receive. Example of a modern day slave, and I call them the traveling mandingos because they go around in like a circus and work for free and for food and shelter.